Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for your continued coverage. For everyone watching, I pray that you and your families are safe and well. What I can tell you is that the last couple days have not been good for our state, and for the next several days and weeks, uh, they will not be easy either. Uh, but I can assure you that we will get through this. Um, obviously, our focus since the early hours of this morning after the hurricane passed through has been on search and rescue missions. Saving lives is the number one priority. And to that end, at around 3 o'clock this morning, as soon as the weather allowed, we started moving search and rescue assets, people, boats, trucks, uh, to the affected parishes. And those search and rescue efforts are going to continue uh, all day and, quite frankly, for as long as necessary. And I want to pause just for a moment and really thank all of the men and women who are working so hard to make this happen. This really has been a partnership between the local level first responders, uh, states, the federal government has put assets into this effort as well. Uh, and when I say state, it really is about 16 different states, including Louisiana, uh, that have been engaged in search and rescue today. And as much as I wanted to get out and survey the damage uh, for myself today, I did not do so uh, because all of our air assets were needed today for search and rescue because the affected portion of our state uh, was so large. And many of those areas were not accessible by ground, at least not. As was forecasted, Hurricane Ida delivered catastrophic wind surge and rain across southeast Louisiana. Almost the entire southeastern port part of our state is without power presently. And sometimes you hear it, you know, a million people without power. It's about 1.1 million homes and businesses. It's well over a million people. I don't have a precise number for you. We do have about 25,000 linemen in the state engaged in the effort to restore power and several thousand more are en route. Obviously, we uh, need to have the power restored just as quickly as possible. And for that restoration process, there's going to be some priorities so that the most critical infrastructure comes up first. And quite frankly, we're talking about things like our hospitals, dialysis centers, and so forth. And while this was an extremely catastrophic storm, uh, and, and again, the surge, the wind, the rain was all as advertised, uh, if there is a silver lining, and today it's kind of hard to see one, it is that our levee systems really did perform extremely well. Uh, our federal, non-federal levee systems, particularly the hurricane and storm risk reduction system, uh, in the metropolitan New Orleans area, all performed as intended. Uh, I can tell you that there's been a preliminary damage assessment of levees today, uh, people getting eyes on those levees. We don't believe there was a single levee anywhere now that actually breached, that failed. There were a few smaller levees uh, that were overtopped to some degree and for some duration of time, and that did result in uh, some people's homes uh, being flooded, uh, but they did not fail. They, they overtopped in a, in a few areas. And I want to thank all of the people across the country who have been very generous in their support uh, in terms of the investment made in that hurricane risk reduction system. CPRA is working to deploy portable pumps and flood fighting assets to Lafouche and Plaquemines Parish, to St. Bernard, uh, to Lafitte, to Laplace, to Grand Isle, uh, and to St. Charles to assist with some dewatering efforts that are necessary. This morning, I conducted a unified command group meeting. Um, FEMA representatives were on hand, National Guard, Corps of Engineers, all of our state agencies as well 
to ensure that all the partners across the state are coordinating getting help to our people just as quickly as possible. I was also able to participate in a call uh, with President Biden and the FEMA administrator and other state and local officials both in Louisiana and in Mississippi. Uh, I appreciated the President's time today. As you may have heard, the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security and the FEMA administrator will be in Louisiana tomorrow. Uh, I look forward to meeting with them to further uh, explain to them what the situation is here and the needs that we have that they can assist with. Um, and I hope to also visit several of the affected parishes tomorrow. We're putting that schedule together uh, as we speak. There are more than 5,000 National Guardsmen activated and responding uh, to this disaster, and more are on the way uh, from sister states. Uh, we've known since before this hurricane hit that additional assistance would be needed in terms of soldiers of different military occupational specialties, uh, such as MPs and engineers and so forth. Uh, and I can tell you we've received commitments from 13 additional states, uh, and these soldiers from these other states will start rolling into Louisiana within the next couple of days. The National Guard search and rescue assets already engaged uh, and in fact, this, the engagement area uh, is about 29 parishes, uh, but they've, they've got uh, 195 high water vehicles, 79 boats, and 34 helicopters, all conducting search and rescue uh, since very early this morning. Uh, one of the numbers that I got earlier today, uh, the National Guard had rescued 191 citizens and 27 pets across Jefferson, St. John the Baptist, and Orleans parishes, uh, but also conducted helicopter hoist and lift operations in Laplace and Jean Lafitte, and Jean Lafitte, I should say. Um, the State Fire Marshal's Office is leading a task force of about 900 individuals from 15 different states. They've been conducting uh, primary search and rescue operations in collaboration with local first responders worked a little differently uh, today because for the first part of the day they were responding to 911 calls and calls for help that had come in overnight that uh, could not be responded to because the, the weather just wouldn't allow first responders to go out. The mission now is to go back and do the very organized uh, grid search where they do a primary uh, search and then they'll come back and do a secondary search to make sure that any survivors who need to be rescued are in fact rescued. Uh, in addition to the task force currently on the ground, uh, we have 200 additional individuals on the way from New York and from Massachusetts. Uh, I can tell you that that task force checked on more than 400 homes uh, today. Uh, the vast majority of people were found to be okay and unharmed, uh, but a number of individuals uh, did uh, require rescuing, uh, and then there, were actually, there was actually one that had a life-threatening emergency. Uh, due to physical uh, damage and to water and electric issues, uh, three hospitals have been evacuated since the storm hit uh, us yesterday. Those are Shaber and Homa, St. Anne's in Raceland, and Our Lady of the Sea in Galliano. A fourth hospital, Terrebonne General, is in the process of being evacuated tonight. The Department of Transportation and Development has 177 buses in operation, and so far they have evacuated more than 400 people from various locations in the affected parishes. There are 18 water system outages impacting more than 312,000 people and 14 boil water advisories impacting more than 329,000 people. And we've talked about electricity, we've talked about water. It's pretty clear that if you have evacuated, now is not the time to return unless and until your parish informs you that it is okay to do so. Uh, businesses aren't open. Stores aren't open, schools aren't open, 
Uh, and quite frankly, we need to put as little demand on our water systems and on our, elect on our electric grid as possible. So please, uh, before you return, contact your Office of Emergency Preparedness or listen to the guidance that's being issued by your parish. Tragically, we can confirm one storm way to death so far, a 60 year old man from Ascension Parish who died after a tree fell on his home off of Highway 621. And it's a good time to remind people that just because the storm has passed, it doesn't mean the dangers have not, as we've talked about before. Uh, in almost all of these storms, more people are killed uh, after the storm passes. So with all of the people without electricity tonight and for some time to come, there will be a lot of generators in use. Please make sure you operate those generators outside in a well-ventilated area away from your home, not under windows and doors, not in crawl spaces or garages. Carbon monoxide poisoning is absolutely deadly. Uh, please pace yourself when you go out to clean up your yard or remove debris. Uh, heat indexes will reach 100 degrees or more over the next two weeks at least. We're also asking that you don't get on the road unless it is absolutely necessary. Uh, and many parishes have curfews in place, so please follow the directions of your local elected officials. There are currently 76 weather-related road outages. Uh, DOTD crews have been out since very early this morning assessing roads uh, and clearing those roads of debris, uh, principally things like uh, trees that have fallen on the roads because of the high winds. Uh, and I can tell you that I-10 westbound in the capital region is open. However, I-10 is closed uh, in Ascension Parish due to downed trees that uh, have not yet been removed. That work is ongoing. Crews are also working to clear portions of I-12 uh, that are blocked in multiple areas. Because of runaway vessels in uh, Bayou Veritaria, uh, Kerner Bridge in Jefferson Parish in the Lafitte area uh, is damaged to the point where it will be closed for some period of time. If you have to get on the road, please check 511LA.org uh, for road closure information and other travel related information as well. Uh, it is still the case that there are down trees and power lines uh, and other debris and standing water as well on many roadways in southeast Louisiana. As of 2.30 today, there were just shy of 2,000 people sheltered in 36 different locations across Louisiana. For the latest shelter information, text LA Shelter to 898-211 or you can call 211. Uh, I have to keep reminding people that whether we like it or not, uh, we are still in a COVID environment. It is a very difficult COVID environment uh, where 100% of our cases today are attributable to the Delta variant, which is highly transmissible. transmissible. So please uh, make sure that, uh, that you're as safe as possible where, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. Uh, and these sheltering operations and transportation and, and evacuation operations, all, everything we're doing uh, needs to be done with COVID in mind. So it's important that we mask, uh, that we distance, that we wash our hands, do all of these things to the maximum extent possible. Last night, President Biden approved my request for a major disaster declaration. We made that request yesterday. Uh, before lunch and he approved it last night and I want to thank him for his prompt attention and his favorable uh, response to that request. Specifically, he granted to Southeast Louisiana individual assistance and public assistance as well as Category A which is debris removal uh, and for the state as a whole he granted Category B emergency protective measures. The Category A and B uh, what is for 100% federal call share for 30 days from the start of the incident, 
uh, for the public assistance is at 75 percent uh, for the federal government, uh, I feel quite certain we will cross the threshold necessary to request that that be increased to 90 percent. Uh, all of this assistance is going to be extremely helpful uh, because people can now register for uh, individual FEMA assistance if they live in one of the affected parishes. Already, more than 18,000 people have taken advantage of the opportunity to register for individual assistance. And so if you live in one of the following parishes, uh, please register for FEMA aid if you were impacted by Hurricane Ida. Uh, and those parishes are Ascension, Assumption, East Baton Rouge, East Feliciana, Iberia, Iberville, Jefferson, Lafouche, Livingston, Orleans, Plaquemines, Point Capi, St. Bernard, St. Charles, St. Helena, St. James, St. John the Baptist, St. Martin, St. Mary, St. Tammany, Tanchbehoe, Terrebonne, Washington, West Baton Rouge, and West Feliciana parishes. For many people, the fastest and easiest way to apply for FEMA assistance is by visiting disasterassistance.gov. If it isn't possible to apply online, you can call 800-621-3362. The toll-free telephone lines operate from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week. And I know that cell phone coverage has been very spotty Today, electricity uh, is uh, practically non-existent for most people in southeast Louisiana, and so the Internet may be a problem. Uh, but you have several uh, ways to register for aid, and certainly you have uh, an extended period of time in which to do so. Um, but as soon as you're able, and if, if you've been impacted by the hurricane and live in one of these parishes, we encourage you to register for aid. The Division of Administration has also announced that it has closed state offices tomorrow in the same 25 parishes. Uh, we will let you know if there are additional closures in the future. In closing, I want to ask the people of Louisiana to do what you always do best, and that is to be a good neighbor. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Reach out to the elderly couple next door across the road. Uh, make sure that to the extent that you can, you're checking on family members who may be elderly or have special needs. There are an awful lot of unknowns right now. There are certainly more questions than answers. Uh, I can't tell you when the power is going to be restored. I can't tell you when all the debris is going to be cleaned up and repairs made and so forth. But what I can tell you is that we're going to work hard every single day uh, to deliver as much assistance as we possibly can. And I can tell you we're going to push uh, Entergy and all the other electric companies to restore power just as soon as they can. And they are busy doing that, uh, again, with more than 25,000 linemen on the job as we speak. Those linemen, by the way, come from 22 different states. Can't tell you when your cell service is going to be restored if it's currently out, although I can tell you that AT&T made tremendous progress earlier this afternoon. And so uh, hopefully your cell phone coverage is back or will soon uh, be back. Uh, and I, I know that uh, cell phones have become the preferred method of, of making phone calls for many people. There are a lot of individuals who don't even have landlines and this made communication very difficult and frustrating today. Uh, not just difficult and frustrating, but if you needed help, it, it might have been very difficult for you uh, to call for that help. Uh, but we do believe that this situation is going to improve very, very quickly if your phone service hasn't yet been restored. And I know that a lot of people out there are tired. Uh, and sometimes this can be, uh, you know, too much to, to bear. It's a lot to deal with. Uh, but I know the people of our state are stronger than the strongest of storms. 
Uh, our spirit is unbreakable, uh, and we're going to embark on this road to recovery together. Don't know yet if we will have a press conference uh, tomorrow. I do hope to visit, as I said, with the DHS secretary and the FEMA administrator, uh, and then travel across uh, southeast Louisiana and visit several of the parishes as well. And we may just make ourselves available to the press as we make those stops, uh, or at least one of those stops, uh, as, we, as we travel. Uh, but we will give you more information later. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to pause and take questions. We've got a lot of people here uh, who can answer questions and, and so forth. And so if you, if you feel like you need to direct a question to one of them, please feel free to do so. And certainly, if I feel like uh, one of them would be better uh, able to answer a question, I'll ask them to come up and, and respond. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and look, uh, it, it's, it's very difficult to be without power, whether it's because you want lights or an air-conditioned home or because you're trying to run a business or you're trying to run a hospital or a dialysis center and save people's lives. Uh, the storm came through yesterday. It exited our state uh, very, very late yesterday, almost still at hurricane strength. It tied for, as best we can tell, the strongest hurricanes that have ever impacted the state of Louisiana. The winds were extremely strong uh, and sustained at 150 miles per hour for a long period of time. Uh, and I've been seeing uh, reports that gusts got into the 170s, maybe the early, I mean, uh, lower 180s in, in different places. This wreaks havoc on infrastructure, and that includes on the electric grid. Uh, and, you know, there are eight transmission lines that, that feed the New Orleans area. All of them failed. Uh, and I can tell you, Entergy has been out, and not just Energy, all of the electric companies and, and, and working with the Public Service Commission, they have been out doing their damage assessments today, figuring out the best strategy to start to restore power and giving uh, preference to those critical uh, infrastructure uh, pieces that have to be powered up first. Uh, we really need our hospitals more than anything else to come back up. Uh, so that people who are in ICU rooms and on ventilators and so forth can continue to receive the life-saving care that they need. That's important all the time. It's certainly important uh, even more so uh, because of the COVID situation and the number of people uh, in the hospital and many of whom are on uh, mechanical ventilators. So, uh, you know, I expect that, that in the not too distant future, there will be announcements by Energy uh, and others as to when they believe power will be restored. Uh, but quite frankly, we're just not there yet. Uh, and, and, you know, people are impatient. I get it. I am too. Uh, but the storm uh, was, was still ravaging our area yesterday. It hadn't even reached I-10 24 hours ago. And so it's just, it's just too soon. Uh, right now to say when that power is going to be restored. I, but trust me, I'll be pushing them to get it done in, as soon as possible. And quite frankly, I don't need to. They're, they're out there working extremely hard. They, they had more linemen committed to this effort before the storm ever made landfall than we've ever seen in Louisiana. So I'm optimistic sooner than later it'll be restored, but I can't be more definite than that. Melinda? Yeah, a bunch. Uh, I didn't, and, and I, I have received that information. I didn't bring it, uh, but but I can tell you in the LDH regions, um, one, uh, three, and and nine, uh, an awful lot of the hospitals are on generator power, and they may there may actually be a couple left in region two here in the Baton Rouge area, although the power has been coming back on here, uh, you know, fairly quickly. And, and this, this is a real issue for us, and, and uh, we're working very hard with LDH, uh, with the Corps of Engineers and the Public Service Commission, uh, so, that, so that restoration of power to the hospitals is prioritized, uh, 
but the Corps of Engineers is helping uh, FEMA and GOSEP work to make sure that we are putting technicians at all of these hospitals to keep these generators running as long as possible, but also to identify exactly the size generator that is needed so that we can get a backup on site in case that one uh, should fail and, and we need to transition to a new generator. These things are happening uh, as we speak, um, and I'll get you a, a better number than a lot of them, but for now I can just tell you it's, it's more than, than not. Yes? Yeah, well, so search, search and rescue, typically when the state forces come in uh, for the urban search and rescue, uh, we go in and do a grid search uh, where we're going to go to and search every single home on every street, and we do that primary search. And then uh, that, that's done pretty quickly to try to figure out whether someone is in the house and, and so forth and needs assistance. And then to make sure that we've adequately covered the area, we'll go back and do a secondary search. Uh, well, what we did most of the day today was try to catch up on the 911 calls. So we were actually partnering with, with local authorities and going out and doing uh, search and rescue at individual addresses where we know people had called for help. And so that, that occupied uh, most of the day. And I'm looking over, I don't see, I don't see Butch, uh, but, but the Butch Browning, uh, the state fire marshal, uh, leads this effort uh, for us, and and so that's that's what we're doing now. We're we're going to have to transition into uh, that grid search that I just mentioned, and because we have so many uh, populated areas in southeast Louisiana uh, that received such damage, whether it was from the wind or from the rain or the storm surge, uh, this is going to take quite some time. Uh, it's why we have so much of our National Guard de dedicated to it, while we have. Uh, this 900 person task force with more on the way uh, because we want to make sure that anyone who is in their home who needs help uh, is going to receive it and they got to receive it in a timely fashion. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah, there, there uh, have been some rescues made from Grand Isle. Uh, as best we can tell, about 40 people uh, stayed on the island, um, and uh, probably not a good decision. Uh, but uh, but there were uh, efforts made earlier today uh, at uh, in and around Jean Lafitte and Grand Isle. Uh, and does anybody here have any more specific information, Jim? On yeah. Yeah, and, and we're not aware of any loss of life uh, in Grand Isle. Uh, but it was only accessible by air uh, today, and, and so we were able to finally get some air assets up. Uh, and I know that we've been able to get some people on the ground to inspect facilities there uh, as well. And, and so I, I'm, I'm quite certain that, that any needed rescues have been made, and we will, we will get back with you if, if for some reason that's not the case. Yes, sir. Well, first of all, any, any additional deaths would be unconfirmed. Um, and until a coroner officially confirms the death and attributes that death to the hurricane, I'm not going to get in front of them. I, I will just tell you that I had a number of conversations uh, overnight and, and today uh, with parish presidents and other uh, officials who believe that the death count attributable to the hurricane will go up. Uh, because they see uh, catastrophic damage in certain places that they have every reason to believe were inhabited at the time the damage occurred. Uh, and, and it is certainly possible, and, and I'm praying for it, uh, that by uh, some miracle individuals had left or did survive and, and so forth. Uh, but I think that's what, that's what you're hearing out there, and, and, uh, and I would be 
surprised, but, but obviously very pleasantly surprised if the uh, confirmed death toll doesn't go up uh, considerably over the next couple of days. But what we want to make sure of is that the death toll doesn't go up for things that are entirely preventable, like carbon monoxide poisoning, like heat exhaustion, uh, like falling off the roof or, or injuring yourself when you uh, use a chainsaw or driving into water, you know, something like that. Uh, that's typically where we see the most deaths uh, associated with a hurricane. It's in the recovery, not in the actual storm itself. Melinda? No, and, and uh, w one of the good things about a hurricane, and there aren't many, is that when the hurricane passes, the wind changes direction, and it'll blow the water out just like it blew it in, and, and we saw that happen. Um, and, and so in most, in most places, the, the water began receding uh, uh, pretty quickly. Now, there are a few areas where they received a lot of rain inside protected levees, where that water isn't going to drain out and it ultimately has to be pumped out and there, there are some pumping issues um, you know even in, in New Orleans but but we're, we're very pleased to say that uh, New Orleans actually uh, withstood the rain uh, quite well and no storm surge got into uh, that area and and so very limited number of structures actually took on any water in New Orleans but there may be some pumping that's needed to get that water uh, in the Lakeview area for example uh, out and back back into the lake. Uh, the other thing that's helping us is the weather forecast today from the National Weather Service doesn't call uh, for a great deal of rain uh, over the coming week. And so we, we are going to dry out as well. Um, and, and, and might there be an isolated area or two where, you know, something could happen and, and, and there be uh, a little more water than, than they currently have? I'm, I'm out, that's always possible. Uh, but that's not something that we, we are particularly concerned about at the present. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, f first of all, this is this is a tough blow. I mean, and and but things are going to be okay. It's hard to see that today, uh, but we are we are going to get through this, and and we've been through these times before. Uh, we're going to get through this one. Um, it, one thing I can tell you is it, nothing is ever perfect. It doesn't happen as fast as you want it to happen, and 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 it's a very little consolation to someone that the levees held up if in fact their homes took water. And, and if your home didn't take water, but you lost your roof or your walls because of the wind, you know, it, but at the end of the day, this was a catastrophic storm. Uh, we're going to work as hard as we can every day to make people's lives just a little bit better, to deliver all of the assistance that we can possibly deliver and to do it as, as, as soon as possible. And we're here less than 24 hours after the hurricane passed through our state we're still in a search and rescue mode. We're, we're not recovering yet. We're still responding and trying to save lives. And then, and then we will be transitioning into uh, to the response mode as, uh, as well. But, but I just want to reassure the people that we are going uh, to get through this. And, and we're a good, strong, resilient, faithful people. And we know how to be good to one another uh, no matter what our political philosophies might be or divisions we might have about other things, when it comes to natural disasters, uh, we do see one another as brothers and sisters. Uh, for me as a Catholic Christian, brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, and we respond that way. And, and that's going to continue, and we're going to work just as hard as we can every single day. But it isn't going to be fast, and it's not going to be perfect. Yes, ma'am.
Yeah. Well, uh, what I can tell you is that it was very frustrating. Probably nobody was more frustrated than I was when I couldn't get firsthand reports from mayors and parish presidents earlier today. Um, but I think you're going to see one of the differences is that we had enough redundant means of communication that we never lost all communication. Uh, for example, uh, when the email system went down, we couldn't do the web EOC requests that we typically uh, receive from the parishes. Uh, but we very quickly had a workaround where they could continue to request assistance. Uh, another difference, I think you're going to see these systems back up much, much quicker. Uh, I haven't confirmed it yet, but on my way in, I got a, a, a message from AT&T, and they believe their system is back up. And since 911 systems in many cases uh, are pegged to that system, uh, I think you're going to see that that's back up. So, so things are coming back up much faster than we've seen uh, before as, as well. Um, but yeah, it's frustrating uh, because you put in communications infrastructure to assist you uh, all the time, but especially when you have a disaster. And when a disaster, uh, you know, renders that communication uh, ineffective, it, it is extremely frustrating. Uh, but we have enough redundancy in the system, and the system is hardened enough that it, we can get it back online uh, much faster. And, and I expect that, that uh, right now, for example, the overwhelming majority of communications that need to take place are absolutely happening uh, between uh, GOSEP and, and all of the parishes. Well, look, thank you all very much. Uh, I, I do appreciate you all for working to continue to provide coverage for this. Um, I do want to ask one more time for the people of L Southeast Louisiana uh, to do everything you can uh, to follow the guidance that you're given from your local officials. Uh, make sure you, you are aware of and, and, uh, and that you conform to whatever curfews uh, may be in place, that you don't come back until it is safe uh, for you to do so. Uh, and, and that you'll actually have some of the basic necessities uh, of life, like electricity and, and water and, and so forth, uh, and that we all check on our neighbors and our family, especially those who are elderly or have special needs, uh, and then we're, let's work together uh, and let's lift one another up in prayer. We're going to get through this, uh, and, and it may not seem like it, but every single day will be a day where we take a step forward uh, and we will be making improvements, uh, and that's going to happen uh, all across southeast Louisiana with the partnership of the federal government and the state and all of our um, folks around the various parishes, especially those local first responders uh, and the volunteer groups, the faith-based organizations, the nonprofits, all of whom step up and move extremely fast, and, and that's all going to come online very quickly too. So thank you all very much. We will announce our next press conference at some point in the future.